The Spanish government has now said that it has proof of interference by Russian groups in the Catalonian referendum. In fact, on the 9th of October, Vion had brought you the news of reported Russian involvement in the Catalonian uprising, pointing out as to how the Russian social media sites had created a trending story out of the Catalan referendum. Here's a look at by our senior foreign affairs editor, Padma Rao, on this issue. Now, the Catalonian referendum may or may not end in a declaration of independence tomorrow, but why are countries that have nothing to do with Spain meddling in what is essentially an internal affair? But now again, examining who is saying what on Catalonia and why. The story of the referendum for independence in Spain's autonomous province of Catalonia is getting, as Alice in Wonderland would have said, curiouser and curiouser. With the exception of Hungary's PM Viktor Orban, who maintains close ties to Moscow, the European Union preferred to stay out of what is essentially Spain's domestic matter. But it did condemn the violence at the hands of the Spanish police that saw hundreds of demonstrators injured last week. Catalonia is within Europe and the EU is also obliged to condemn violence, so that reaction is logical. But Catalonia is more than 3,670 kilometers away from Moscow. So why did President Vladimir Putin see it fit to sharply condemn Madrid for sending in central police forces to try and prevent the referendum in Catalonia? Merely a week after condemning the referendum as illegal, the Russian president told EU leaders that he was, quote, not going to hide that he was very worried about Spain, unquote. A popular Russian digital paper went a step further. It recalled how the Western media had reported on uprisings against the Soviets during the Cold War and titled its story, Spain brutally suppresses the Catalan Spring. Catalonia has been the top story for many Russian media concerns. Over the past two years, a Catalan delegate has reassured a think tank supported by the Kremlin that Catalonia will recognize Russia's annexation of Crimea and will also waive existing sanctions against Moscow if the Free Catalonia movement can count on Moscow's support for its own cause. There are rumors galore about Russia's involvement in Catalonia. Protesters at the uprising have reportedly used Russian hackers to maintain electoral websites containing the electoral roll when Spain's police forces were carrying ballot boxes away to prevent the referendum. The hackers are said to have added links that enabled multiple copies of the website, making it difficult for the authorities to shut them down. Russian social media sites too have created a trending story out of the Catalan referendum. Critics say that Russia is more than interested in at least rocking, if not toppling, the European Union, with which it has had strained ties. President Putin is not alone. More than 7,440 kilometers across Spain's other Atlantic coast, controversial President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela launched a fierce attack on Spain for suppressing the referendum too. Mr. Maduro declared Spain's Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy a hypocrite for supporting Venezuela's opposition, which for months had also been at the forefront of protests in the oil-rich but bankrupt state. Spain had criticized the clampdown by Maduro's regime in sharp terms and accused Mr. Maduro of disregarding his country's 30 million people and the crippling shortages they are facing. The standoff in Spain seems headed for talks and compromises, but whichever way it will end, it seems certain that when it comes to global politics, even a domestic squabble can be a powerful tool in the hands of nations at loggerheads with each other. Padma Rao, Beyond.